Hi everybody, John Cini here and welcome to Full Quest Season 4 Semi-Final 1. It's getting exciting because one of these ladies is going through to the final where we will crown the Grand Champion Funkster for Season 4 and it's going to be very exciting. So if you're new to the show, you'll kind of figure it out. Uh, but let's jump straight to the Funksters. And Vicky, tell us where you're dialing in from. I'm dialing in from the Surrey Windsor Borders. Surrey Windsor, that's down from, wasn't it? Down. Yeah, down from you. And over from Barb. <laughs> yeah, this way here quite a bit more. <laughs> Definitely over from Barb. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Barb, where are you dialing in from? I hail from Seattle, Washington. Definitely a bit on that side. A bit on the, that side. Yeah. Um, so, usual rules apply. Uh, no swearing, no politics, no religion. And I had a couple of questions saying, hey, what's with the no politics thing? And the answer is because we're after independent life experiences of our funksters rather than stuff what you've just seen on TV. If you are, of course, a politician, you want to be on the show and join our local MP, Alexander Stafford, we'd want to find out when was the last time you sent an email to the wrong person and stuff like that. Because if you stand for anything, we can find that off your website. So that's the answer to that question, because we're after life experiences and funny stories from Funksters. So I don't know who the lowest ranked Funkster is. I suspect it might be Vicky. So we're going to ask you to go first. You can pick a, a piggy bank an old film projector, a war plane, I don't know what that is, or some stained glass. Piggy bank, please. Piggy bank. Where would you rather be from? The sea. The sea? Like a the mermaid? The sea. I like a mermaid. Yeah, very definitely like a mermaid. Yes. Um, and actually a mermaid so that I could come in and out of the water or... Uh, we've been watching sharks on the nature program and there is a shark and I've forgotten its name. I feel like it might be an epaulette shark mm -hmm. um, and it's only a little shark um, mm -hmm. and it climbs out onto the reef and then really? uses its front fins to actually walk from um, pool to pool and then gets in another pool and eats what it wants to there and then when it's had enough in that pool gets up and walks to another pool and then eventually the tide comes and it goes for a little swim and then it comes back again what's it called an epaulette shark epaulette shark it's yeah. sort of small and beige with spots on never heard of that although, yeah. although when we went to uh i think toronto aquarium sharks were around there with that kind of i'm going to kill you look on your on the faces <laughs> I'm going to, it's got a real beat. I'm going to kill you. Yeah, just before feeding time then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Barb, you can pick an old film projector, a warplane, or a stained glass window. I'm not going to lie. I sort of feel like we should just call the show off here because I've already learned more from Vicky in the last minute than I have probably in the <laughs> last week. <laughs> um, go, I'll, take, <laughs> I'll take the film projector. The film projector. What never fails to improve your mood? Singing. Actually, unbelievably hard to stay whizzed up about something while you are singing. What can you sing now? You've got about uh, 40 seconds. No. Yes, we do. Yes, well, see, we but do. I got to think, the thing that I was going to say, so uh, we're not allowed to talk religion. So um, I guess I could beep out all the words. My brain is going flatline. So Bill Chase, are you familiar with Bill Chase? Vicky, no. Trumpet player known for playing high, loud, and fast. Um, you're at the top of my grocery list. Dun, 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 you're the dessert I don't want to Yeah, you need to go look up Bill Chase because it's very, Chase. very cheerful music, very high, loud, and fast. If you ever did, um, did the British do pet band in high school? No. Not so much? That's oh, just, okay. Well, yeah, I've learned more from you in the last minute than. It was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Chase, look you, up. You, uh, heard him, you heard of him? Never. No. Uh, no. no, and and I am so pleased I didn't pick that because the <laughs> sort of singing, I'm dying on behalf of Barb, and then she just sang brilliantly and and <laughs> yeah, sorry I remember singing in the bath once and no. my dad coming up to see what was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question two, Vicky, you can pick a winter scene, a scuba diver, uh, the Mars lander, or a lady doing some yoga. Oh, I know the question isn't going to be anything about a scuba diver, but I have missed diving so much. I want a scuba diver, please. You're correct. It is nothing to do with scuba diving. No. How, how teen smart are you? Uh, no. no, no we've, got, we've got three nieces 
uh, who are now somewhere between 13 and 19. And yeah, it's quite a mystery. We stalk them on social media. They know they're stalked on social media. Um, they're open to the stalking so that we can keep an eye on them. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's a whole bunch of different values, but I can do a little bit above. So I'm working with some students from Royal Holloway University, which is just down the road uh, and tapping into their awareness of the environment. And we're doing, um, or I'm driving a village based um, climate change project through gardening um, and tapping into those and had some conversations with some maybe more like very late teens like 19 to 22s and then then there's a bit more of a switch but down in the proper teenage area no we went to uh last summer i don't know if i told you this um uh media city at salford where they have transported the blue peter garden from outside television center and put it outside the new media city so you've got percy thrower's footprints leslie judd's footprints Peter Purvis's footprints and John Noakes' footprints, and only British people of a certain age will understand what on earth we are talking about. Yeah, a very iconic uh, children's programme, wasn't Absolutely it? Absolutely is. And they've transformed the garden, which, I mean, it's uh, much smaller than what you think. It's only about 20 foot long, if that. Um, but if you haven't got a garden, look at people doing flowers and trees and stuff like that. Anyway, Bob, um, you can pick a winter scene the mars lander or a lady doing yoga let's do the winter scene winter scene how much routine do you prefer in your life prefer that's an interesting question <laughs> i have a great deal of routine in my life actually um, uh, but if i ran the zoo my days would look constantly different i do not personally thrive on uh routine that said um i have I have special needs kids. I have, uh, you know, we have feeding tubes that require, you know, every two hours you do a, there's a tremendous amount of structure in my life and we also homeschool. So that uh, I think what I have observed is that my people do well on routine. So um, we have a life that is chock full of patterns, rhythms, routines. It's lovely, but uh, yeah, if, if it was all up to me, I think I would uh, do something different every day. I think life is about compromises, right? So, you know, you, I, I'm a bit of a routine person and a bit of a chaotic person at the same time. Mm. Yeah, I think it's it's I, kind of like the, the age old, what sort of list writer are you, right? Um, there's uh, there, there are people that write a list with the intent of doing it. Uh, I personally like to do it. And then I write a list saying what I did and I get to feel really good about myself, <laughs> right? And I always check off my list in that sense well done i think what worked really well for you jonathan is planned spontaneity or yeah. rigid flexibility that's a good phrase that can i understand yeah. that yeah oh definitely i i love both of those i don't like spontaneity because if we were going to be spontaneous none of the three of us would know who was in charge and who was going to do it and i don't mind us being spontaneous but we all know jonathan's in charge so that's planned spontaneity in action Nice, nice mm. phrase. I like that. Yeah, well said. I'm going to uh, get a baseball hat, turn it the wrong way around, and drive in an open top Jeep going rebel. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to plan to do it. Is the, yeah, I've got a plan to do it. Yeah, I've got a hire yeah, a car. Exactly. Make a list about that. Yeah. Do all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question three, uh, Vicky, you can pick uh, some blue stuff, uh, some sandwiches, a seal, or some wedding rings. I'm going to go blue stuff. It's might be an interesting question for you. When was the last time you went physically underground? Oh, so have we actually done anything for years? Well, <laughs> I think we've just like lived in the back garden. I think probably somewhere towards the end of 2019, literally because we have an underground that we call the underground, which is the tube, yeah. um, our train system in London. I would have gone on London Underground in somewhere late autumn 2019. Super fond of caving. However, I will go into a cave if it's under the water. Bit weird there. So where is good, which is up from us, very, very interesting National Coal Mining Museum. Very, very oh, really? interesting. Yeah. 
very interesting. I think that would definitely trigger some of the the claustrophobic feel. I have total uh, admiration for... Not necessarily, for because you're going on a train underground. Ah, that's, uh, like the, that's like the Channel Tunnel. No, that totally freaked me out. I've never been on that. Uh, lack of control. In a, in a car, in a train, in a tunnel, underwater. Uh, no. I prefer that the sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bob, you can pick uh, some sandwiches. Uh, a seal or some rings. I'll do the sandwiches if we get to clarify, since both of you are British. Aren't they supposed to be called Sammies? Mm. No, is that not? Is that Australian? No, mm. never heard of that. Sarnies. Okay. Sarnies. Oh, yeah, Sarnies. Yeah, Sarnies. Yeah. Am I just pronouncing it wrong? It was in a British cookbook, and I'm like, wait a second, what is this recipe? And it said it was, you know, like S A M M I E S, and I read it, and I'm like, oh, a sandwich. I thought it was just never mind. Uh, sandwiches. Oh, Vicky's right, Sarnies. Duped by a British cookbook. Oh, it. Oh, oh, oh. Making fun of us Americans for gullibility. All right, go ahead. You Thanks. want to pick the sandwiches, the sarnies, or the sammies? When did you last go on the motorway? Oh, here we are again. Define motorway. Something that's designated, designated where you can't stop. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm with you. Like a freeway. Gotcha. Um, so yesterday, um, two stories about this. One, I have issues with Google, which we've established. And yeah. Google Maps was supposed to be directing me to an orthodontist because um, my children all have teeth that make orthodontists go and buy yachts. And uh, it changed its mind on me three times. We had to do multiple U-turns because it couldn't decide which way I was going. You cannot tell me there's not some kid sitting in his basement getting a <laughs> kick out of directing a mom in a beat up minivan to, you know. Anyway, the interesting thing about this particular motorway that we, that we are next to is when my husband took this job, my husband is a vegetable farmer and we moved to the Seattle area to farm vegetables, which is funny in and of itself. The farm is 800 acres with a motorway through the middle. <laughs> it's a floodplain and they can't actually build houses here. And so it is a, uh, it is a sort of safe farming area, but it is the oddest site personally I've ever seen. There is a pumpkin patch next to my house and a motorway. Send us a picture because I remember twinned with that that place near the M62 where the M62 motorway goes out of the side of that farm. Just yeah, the name of it was on the news. It's, it's such yeah, it's a sheep farm, isn't it? It's what sheep? For, yeah, sheep for, I've seen it. With the sheep is like the farmhouse is in the middle, and the, yeah. the motorway splits and goes around the farmhouse. Yeah, it does. Huh. There'd be yeah. some nervous sheep, wouldn't you think? <laughs> well, some nervous people living in the farmhouse. I said uh, that too. Yeah, sheesh. Yeah. Wow. Um, so that's question three. Uh, question four. Uh, Vicky, you can pick uh, a motorbike, some mountains, the Anglo-American flag, or a green beetle. I like the look of the green beetle. Oh, oh am I going to regret that? <laughs> no, 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 no. I wanna... When did you last sleep all night? Oh, gosh. That's been a long time. Without getting into all the medical ghastly reasons, I had um, hip replacement surgery because I've got arthritis and I haven't probably slept all night since, well, I don't know, before 2014, I would think. Yeah. Oh, dear. How does that manifest itself in the daytime? Do you, do you have, have a Naps. Nice <laughs> no. yeah, so no, I, think, I think you sort of acclimatise, don't you? There's the, um, what's it called? FFW, which is... It's called the first fatal we. It's about managing your drinking. But I drink gallons of water. That's probably not true that it's gallons, but certainly pints of water. And then you've got to make sure that you stop at the right time in the evening so that you can then drag out the sleep period and not disturb yourself. And then don't disturb yourself. And then you can stay in bed. And that's far too much information. And that'll teach me for leaving the flags for you, Barb. I would say I would say that if you're any of Vicky's students who are listening to this, uh, the moral of the story is don't get old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, there is that. Or go to bed in a nappy. Go or... to bed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shall, shall move on. All right. So there's an open goal here for Bob: uh, the motorbike, mountains, or the Anglo-American flag. You know, Vicky took one for the team, so I'll take the flags. Okay. Obviously, that was... Uh, this glory. is going to be a really good question. I'm going to go... <laughs> uh, when was the last time that you were in or around water? Um, well, we do live near the Puget Sound, so we are close to the Pacific Ocean. Um, I would say that my last memorable time actually involved being up a little bit further north. It was a week and a half ago. 
and um, we were by a lake up um, kind of near the Canadian border. Mm. Um, and this was so interesting to me as a non lake house owner. Uh, this was belonged to a friend of mine and it was passed down to the family. And apparently they receive uh, letters a couple times a month offering, you know, millions of dollars for this. I mean, it's, it's a fine cabin, but it's not a million dollar cab because it has a boathouse. And it is ah. now illegal to build a boathouse by the lake. There's so many ah. uh, rules and regulations. And out of this boathouse, they have these, they look like train tracks. They have these iron rails that will take your speedboat right into the lake. So even during the seasons uh, when the lake is down, when water's you know, being yeah, yeah. drawn out, you can get your boat into the lake. And this apparently, uh, it, it's like the Hope Diamond of boathouses. <laughs> So, so because presumably because it makes a mess and a noise and all that kind of stuff getting speed yeah. in. is that the reason I, I am not a lake owner or a lake house owner so i'm not entirely sure the details but apparently yes there are issues of uh sand being moved there's sediment issues yeah. and we have some environmentalist uh tendencies up this direction and so there's concerns about you know what fish you're making unhappy and yeah, there's just a lot of politics to, involved in having a house by the by the water no politics no 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 not even no 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 i didn't say birds. i had the politics I said, it's a thing yeah. there's a you know there's yeah. a lot of different concerns i know yeah. that the sediment was one of them mm. you would there'll be a whole eco the... climate that just yeah. sits there at that bridge between land and water you know like nesting birds um, yeah. small creatures that that want to go each way so yeah, I think that there's probably myriad issues involved. The sediment was the one that was fascinating to me. Like, how dare you get your sand on my property? Um, <laughs> sort of a thing. But um, Moving along after sediment, sediment so is an Iraqi leader, any sediment has seen. Um, <laughs> uh, so, go to, uh, question five. Uh, Vicky, you can pick some soldiers, uh, a potted plant, a sea turtle, or a palace. I've had... So I, you know, I pick the pictures that I like the pictures. But no, bad mistake. Bad no, I know. But <laughs> I, I've got to go sea turtle. Sea got, turtle. I mean, look at the colour of that water. What's the worst <laughs> thing you paid money for? The worst thing that I paid money for is generally the thing that I regret afterwards. And we can be very lulled into you know, by this. It's either, you know, we see the adverts and there's it's stuff. So, you know, a microphone or a, or a phone yeah, case or the yeah, yeah. stuff in your life. But there's also lots of like training courses and get rich quick stuff. Um, and so there have been a few training programs that I was there at the event and it sounded so good. And then I bought into it and it was awful. But the last thing for me is books. I'm a, a nightmare for you'll recommend a book and I yeah. value your opinion. So I'll go buy the book. And then I buy the book and I just never read the books I like mm. things on Kindle and I don't know why I keep falling for buying a book which is because sort of a you think that thing. the knowledge will somehow permeate into your head yeah or it's the, the thought <laughs> the ridiculous <laughs> thought that I might actually open the book and use a highlighter mm. pen in yeah. order to interact with the knowledge in there when the reality is I won't yeah so yeah myriad of things uh, so are you saying it doesn't work that way the whole uh, osmosis of knowledge through the jonathan well i thought it was like bananas insofar as you know if you leave a banana in the corner of your room eventually you'll get the smell of the banana in throughout everything i thought books this is what i'm saying I, yeah. I have some deep yeah. philosophy books sitting on the floor down here and i'm just waiting <laughs> for them to, for to permeate percolate upwards yeah banana yeah. style yeah well yeah i was gonna say go to the library vicky that's free and then if you, you don't like the book you just Toss it. Yeah. What's so funny about you highlighting their books? They get really. But that, well, like, that. yes. I mean, the problem with going to the library is I wouldn't be allowed to highlight the book. True. And if I had the time to go to the library, I could have just read the book that I bought here. Oh, question five, I think. Are we on? Yes, yes we are. Uh, you can pick some soldiers. What's a plant or a palace? A palace. Palace. What's the worst job you ever had? So anyway, toss up. Uh, there was one point during my early self-employment when I taught quite a few piano students. I pushed through about 80 a week uh, and uh, did not love that job, but I learned some important lessons about self-employment taxes. And at the end of that first year, I had to go get a job in a flower shop to pay my self-employment 
taxes. That I thought would be more fun than it was. Um, mm. Truth be told. Mm. But yeah, most of my jobs have involved, um, you know, me taking gigs, me playing weddings. And uh, it's all very, what have I decided to do? Um, so overall, if I've had a bad job, it's my own fault because I took the gig. I think this has cropped up before, actually, your, your piano playing abilities. I think it's has it cropped up before in the previous episode. It's, it's, I've been here a long time, Jonathan. It's possible. Yeah, a lot uh, of things yeah. have crossed. So up. next time you're on, we want, we want A, want singing, and B, we want some kind of, you know, piano recital. Just, <laughs> um, just yeah, I'd vote for that. Yeah, yeah okay. That's... So uh, one of these ladies is going through to the final. I'm not sure if we're going to have a third and fourth place playoff. As soon as our Winter Olympics are on, we might. Um, but to vote is very easy. Leave a vote on uh, the episode page post on funkythinkers.com must be on funkythinkers.com do not vote on youtube or speak or iheart radio or listen notes or any of those other millions of things what you can listen to us on vote for who you're voting for and why uh bob how can we find out more about you uh, you could probably go to my website if you get really ambitious with your spelling www.barbarabrandline.com there's actually not very many of me it's not that hard um, and by all means shoot me an email um i got honry a while ago and took myself off of all the social medias. So you can go look at old stuff, but if you want to get in touch, I would use email. Fantastic. Uh, Vicky, how can we contact you? Same thing. You can go to my website, not Bob's, obviously, uh, <laughs> which is vickywashay.com. Um, just the key thing of spelling it a bit like I've not met somebody who could probably outdo me on the name spelling, but but Brandeline is pretty it's hardcore not, there. Yeah. I'd say we're equals. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm very definitely on socials. Yeah, so excellent, ladies. Thank you so much for being on the show. Congratulations on getting this far, and we'll see one of you in the final. Thanks so much, and speak soon. Thank you. Thank you.